through the process of downloading, processing, and importing high-res, real-world height map data. Last week, we took a look at two websites where we could download height map data, Tangram Height Mapper and also Terrain.Party, and we discovered that both of these uh, give us fairly low resolution height map data at only around uh, one pixel for every eight meters. Well, today we're gonna be looking at a method for getting data that's one pixel per meter. So it's really nice and high res data, but unfortunately it's a little bit more complicated to get this data into Unreal. So I'm gonna go through this process with you step by step so you can see exactly how we can download, process, and import high res height map data into Unreal. So let's get started. All right, so first of all, we're gonna to go to this website called opentopography.org. And this is a site where you can access all kinds of height map data from the world. And it's available and free for anyone to download. So we're gonna to go to opentopography.org and we're gonna come over here and click on data. And this is gonna bring up a map of the world and you can see here, there's kind of this color coding going on where we have uh, green data, red data, and blue data. And what we're interested in is the, the red data. The green data and the blue data aren't necessarily free and open for everyone to use, but the red data from open topography is definitely available. So one thing that you'll notice is that the red data doesn't show up everywhere. It's only in specific locations. And that's one of the limitations of downloading this high-res data. You can't just go anywhere in the world you want and grab the data from that location. You have to pick a location that's already available. And so what I've done is I've selected an area in New Mexico that I'm interested in. So I'm just gonna zoom the map in here uh, right into uh, this region here, uh, the Nacimiento Mountains. All right, so once you've found the area that you're interested in, remember uh, Unreal's maximum height map import size is about eight kilometers by eight kilometers. And so we're gonna wanna uh, select an area that's about that size. Now, there isn't a, a good indication on this map how big things are. And so we're gonna switch over to terrain.party just for a second. And I'm gonna zoom in on the same area and I'm gonna use this box that terrain.party provides and uh, shrink it down to its eight kilometer size and look at that same area. So I'm gonna switch this map here to our USGS shaded relief and you can see uh, what eight kilometers would be. So now I can match this same kind of an area in my other map because I have a better idea of scale. So if I switch back to open topography, this is the area that I'm interested in. And I wanna come over here and pick this select a region button. Once I switch this button on, it gives me the ability to draw a box around the region that I'm interested in. So I'm gonna start the box down here and just kind of pick this area here and I want it to be relatively square because that's the kind of terrain or, or landscape that Unreal is gonna create. And once I'm happy with my selection, I'm gonna unclick and it'll bring me down to uh, this new area here where I can select the different data sets that are available. Uh, now, if you are in a different location in the world, the data sets that show up for you may be different and you might have to try a couple of them uh, just to see which one works best. But in my case, I know that I don't want to have snow on my landscape. And so I'm gonna come over here and click the raster button. And that's gonna bring up uh, a new screen here. Now, the nice thing about this map on this screen is that it has this little uh, two kilometer scale down here. So I can check to see that uh, this box that I've drawn is close to eight meter or eight kilometers uh, by eight kilometers. Now, mine is a little bit bigger than that, but that's okay because uh, we can shrink it down a little bit later. All right, so I'm gonna scroll down and make sure all my settings are correct. The first one that I wanna look at is the data output format. And there are a bunch of different options available, but in my case, I want GeoTIFF. 
This is gonna give me an image file that's using the TIFF format, but it's not the same kind of TIFF that Photoshop can read. If you try to open this TIFF file in Photoshop, it'll give you garbage because Photoshop doesn't recognize GeoTIFF. All right, the next setting that we wanna pick is the layers and types of additional SRTM data. And we want to use digital terrain model. If you use digital surface model, uh, that height map data is gonna include trees and buildings and other objects that are above the terrain. Um, but we want to use the uh, digital terrain model so that we just get the height map data for the ground and nothing else. All right, next, when we come down here to visualization, I can uncheck generate hill shade images because I don't need images that are shaded. I'm actually gonna be building this terrain in Unreal so I don't need uh, a picture of what it looks like shaded or anything like that. So the last step that I need to do is come down here and give my job a title and a description. And um, if you have an account with Open Topography and you uh, tag all of your batches with titles and descriptions, it'll keep track of the downloads that you've made in case you need to come back and alter them later. In my case, I don't really care, so I'm just gonna give this uh, job title test and uh, maybe downloading high res height data, something like that. And I'll put my email address in here and hit submit. And what it's doing now is it's processing my request. It's taking all of the data that it has and uh, cropping it down to just that area that I selected so that it can give me exactly what I was looking for. And once it's done processing here, I'll be able to download a zipped file that contains the data. All right, so it's done. And you can see here it's giving me this file called rasters sdem tar.gz and this is a zip file so I'm gonna right click on this and pick or I'm just gonna left click on it actually and it's gonna download it for me so it's done loud downloading I'm just gonna click on it to open it in WinRAR and now I get this file called output underscore be dot tip so I can put this anywhere in my case I'm gonna save it to the desktop and now uh, I need a way to process this data to get it into the format that Unreal needs. If you'll remember from last week's video, we discussed how Unreal needs a 16-bit grayscale ping image that's in one of uh, a set of very specific uh, resolutions. And so we need to take this GeoTIFF file and convert it into something that Unreal can use. And that's what we're gonna do next. All right, in order to convert our GeoTIFF file to something that Unreal can read, I'm gonna be using this software called TerraSculptor. And I really like TerraSculptor because it reads in tons of different height map formats, uh, allows me to uh, change them around and then export them in exactly the kind of format that uh, Unreal needs. Now, you can download TerraSculptor for free. However, it is Patreon supported. So if you do use it, I'd recommend uh, donating uh, to the Patreon for this software um, because it's really useful. So when you first open it up, you get this welcome screen. And what I'm gonna do here is pick import terrain. And it's gonna ask me to give it a height map. So I'm gonna drop down the file format window and scroll down here till I find GeoTIFF. And here it is. Now I've saved my uh, output BE file on my desktop. So here's the file that I'm looking for. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hit open here. And it automatically detects that I have a 32-bit grayscale float um, image. So I'm gonna hit okay and it's gonna create the landscape for me. Now right away, you'll notice that this is really flat looking. Uh, it didn't actually bring in uh, the correct scale for the height map, but the data that I downloaded from opentopography.org uh, is in here and it's all correct. So if I wanna scale it, 
I can come over here to terrain and pick properties. And then I can mess with this scale value here. I'm just gonna give it a scale of 1000. And this isn't actually modifying the data, the, the height map data at all. It's just changing the way that it's displayed in the software. Uh, but once I do that, once I scale it up, you can see that this is some pretty cool looking height map data that we got from opentopography.org. I'm pretty happy with the way that this looks. Uh, if I kind of want to, if I want to go crazy, I could give it a Y scale of 2000 and then it becomes really steep. Uh, that may be a bit much, um, but it does give you an interesting idea of what this height map data looks like. Now, one thing I will mention is when you get to this stage, if you don't like the way that it looks, you may need to go back to opentopography.org and try some different settings or some different areas to download. It doesn't hurt at all to iterate in this process until you get something that you're happy with. Okay, now I need to change the resolution of my height map data to something that uh, works better with Unreal. So I'm gonna come over here to the Modify menu and pick Resample. And you can see that right now my height map is 9991 by 9827. And this is not a size that is very friendly with Unreal. So I'm gonna hit this UDK button here to bring up sizes. There's a specific chart of the sizes that Unreal likes to use. That's pretty cool. If you don't have this UDK button here, you can change the settings of the software to turn this on. And let me show you how to do that really quick. So I'm gonna come here to the tools menu and pick settings. Then I'm going to come here to the Dimensions tab and I'm going to click UDK Landscape. Once I turn on that feature, then if I come here to the Modify menu and I pick re Resample, this UDK menu is going to be available. So we want an 8K by 8K terrain that is one pixel per meter. And so I'm going to pick 8129 by 8129. And I'm gonna, hit, I'm gonna hit OK here. And then back on this menu for quality, I'm gonna use the best quality for resizing available. And then I'm gonna hit OK. And so it's gonna resize my height map data so that it matches the resolution that Unreal is looking for. And there we go. Now there are some other things that I can do in this software and, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in next week's video. Uh, but for now, what I wanna show you is that if you come under here under materials and drop the material type down, you can pick color set and then choose a color set that matches the kind of terrain you want to create. So in my case, I'm going to pick Canyon River and you can see that it kind of adds some coloring to the landscape to make it a little bit more interesting. Now that has nothing to do with getting it into Unreal. It's just for visualizing it in TerraSculptor, uh, but it does make it look a little bit nicer. <laughs> All right, so the last step that we're gonna do in TerraSculptor is export our height map data. So I'm gonna come over here under File and pick Export Terrain. And remember that Unreal needs a ping file, so I'm gonna scroll down my uh, format drop down here to a ping image. And I'm gonna save this to my Unreal projects folder. And I'm gonna give this a, a name that makes sense, like uh, high res height data. And it's gonna save in ping, and when I hit save, it's gonna ask me what kind of ping I want. Unreal needs 16-bit grayscale ping, and so I'm gonna choose that and hit OK. So now it's writing out my height map data and it's ready to be imported into Unreal. So let's jump over to Unreal and do that. All right, so here we are in Unreal and I have an empty map here that I've created. And in order to bring in my terrain, the first thing that I need to do is come up here under modes and select the landscape mode. And now, instead of creating a new landscape, I want to import from file. So in order to do this, I'm going to browse to the file that I just exported out of TerraSculptor. 
And so here's my high res height data. And so I'm gonna hit open. And then I'm gonna hit fit to data and it's, it's detected all of the settings that I need to use based on the height map that I created. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit import. Uh, before I do that, what I wanna show you is that it's created this uh, blue grid or green grid that shows uh, my height map. And so when I import that, that's the height map that it's gonna create. So go ahead and hit this import button. And there it is, there's the height map data that it's imported. Now again, it hasn't set my uh, height scale exactly the way that we want it to be. And so in order to fix that, I need to come out of landscape mode and go back into select. Then I'm gonna select my landscape over here in the world outliner. And for scale, I'm gonna set my height scale or my Z scale to something that may be a little bit more representative of what this data actually looks like. So I'll set it to 250. Now this is something that you could play around with. So you can make it a little bit higher, maybe a little bit lower, um, depending on what your needs are. Um, but you can play with this value to uh, get your height data looking a little bit more like what you want it to be. And here we go. So I've imported my high res height map data into Unreal. And I have now height map data that is one pixel per meter in resolution. And so this is the landscape that we're gonna be editing from uh, going forward. So starting next week, uh, you can see it's pretty boring looking right now, uh, but starting next week, we're gonna work on uh, a landscape auto material that uh, will uh, apply nice materials depending on the height and the slope of the surface. And we'll also be using Terra Sculptor to generate some masks that also determine uh, what types of material go where on the landscape. So I hope you will tune in for that. Uh, so today we uh, took a look at a method for downloading high-res height data, for processing the data, and then for importing it into, into Unreal. It's a little bit more of a complicated process than using uh, terrain.party, for example, uh, but it does create much higher resolution results. So now we have a pretty cool looking terrain. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, if you did, be sure to subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next week.